Hello, welcome back to Rick's Kits. This is the next one on the bill, German Hanamag, SDK of Z2511. Uh, a 135th scale from Tamir. Uh, purchase price of 12 99 believe it or not. So it's quite cheap. Uh, this is a very old kit. Uh, 1973, I think the manufacturer of this one is. Uh, sorely needs update really for what it is it goes together pretty well for you know something of its age there's going to be a little bit of flash on the sprues etc which i have encountered and a little bit of um a little bit of where the lines are slightly you know the mold lines are slightly out and some of the uh like like on the um wheel bits you know they're not they're not quite round they're more of an oval shape but that's the age of the, that's the age of the kit to be honest with you nothing that can't be fixed with a good old uh bit of sanding so yeah currently this is where i am up to uh we have got like a desert yellow scheme going on so oh, it's not going to be Africa core. Um, get the light in there somewhere. So, put a um, black primer down on it first, and then just add a couple of fine layers of desert yellow. Ooh, desert yellow to. Uh, get like the shadow effects and stuff on there uh still got the seat in to put in here um and then we'll close the top up finish building up the um front suspension um thought about actually going the what oh god um Putting Sherman grey on there, then going over with desert yellow on top of that. But I think what I'm going to do is go with the later configuration of paint schemes and uh, just go in with desert yellow anyway. Uh, I will put some red oxide or whole primer red uh, across the bottom because reality is this never the same colour as this it will always be primed on the bottom it's the same when you uh, go behind these wheels they're not desert yellow behind there they're primer colour around the back of there so yeah that's where we're at uh, I'll come back to you when I've got a little bit more done hello and welcome back this is the finished Tamiya 135 SDKFZ 250 one The uh, half track uh, This could actually do with an upgrade A bit of PE parts added to it would be nice um, Better track uh, Perhaps link and length as opposed to the rubber band track that you got because um, a rubber band track just does not sit on this vehicle at all it's overstretched and uh, you'll see that when I uh, turn the vehicle round so what I've got here is um, we're in a desert scheme we've got the Gross Deutschland division, which is the insignia, is there. Um, it's an 8th infantry unit or an 8th infantry platoon. Uh, missing a light bulb here, or a lamp, shall I say, missing the lamp off here. Uh, I did have it all until yesterday evening, but while I was doing bits and pieces, I knocked it while it was on its uh, drawing drawing clip and it has pinged off and gone into god knows where so when i do find it i will put it on but it uh, currently is as it is the only piece missing from the uh, 
entire build. So we have it in a desert scheme. As you can see, I have applied weathering and chipping, etc. Uh, this is around, I would say, 1942-43 configuration for all of the camouflage is got over it overextended so we have, do have a bit of wear and tear there's some bits and pieces that are not worn away uh, let's just bring this in a little bit better we have got um, pigments on the tracks for dirt also got a chip in the stuff on the tracks as well the, the past the containers on the side or the storage containers on the side we've got a little bit of chipping um other than that there's nothing major a uh, little bit of chipping around the decal there i didn't apply numbers as you can see there's no numbers on the on the side of the vehicle doesn't mean to say i won't put them on at some later stage but as it sits I quite like it without the numbers we've got the MG42 on the front there and we've got the MG34 on the back a bit of detail work in the interior the doors do work properly normally when you build this kit these doors are just loose and flop open or they don't fit squarely but these actually do I've managed to get them sorted out and they do work. So we've got a, light, a little bit of light chipping on the inside here. Um, dust and dirt added on the inside of the floor along with some abrasions of the uh, interior colours for the plate etc. So that's done inside. I haven't done much to the bench. Just give them a light dusting of... Uh, of uh, weathering same with the number plates and that I haven't really done much on the back but yeah there it goes all the tools are on for a change uh, and I have done a little bit of work of dirtying and etc etc on the uh, the exhaust muffler filter system there on the side so if we can give it a quick flick I'll try and bring it in a little bit closer there we go you can see all the see all the dirt and that on the side and the dust and things and where it would get a little bit rusty etc on that filter uh flip it over a little bit there we go so carrying on with the get fingers out of the way and oh there we go we've exposed everything Makeshift, make bit of makeshift bugger. Just give me a little back here. There we go. So, yeah, we have got the uh, can we focus. We do, there we go. There's a little bit better. So all the inside of the wheels are dirted up with a little bit of mud. Uh, and you know, as I was saying with the tracks, you can see the tension that's in these tracks is not realistic. These are rubber band tracks. Uh, I could pull them down and super glue them across there, but in the end, they'll just ping off anyway. So, yeah, overall, it's an enjoy it, it is an enjoyable little build. I can recommend it for uh, beginners who want to jump into any form of armour, etc. Uh, it's not a lot of parts, really. And it's it's good to bash it about and weather it up a bit. So, yeah, there she is. The 135th SDKFZ 251. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all my subscribers. I do really appreciate you guys. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.